Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is doing well out there. A uh, couple of quick things. One, I want to give a big shout out to everybody uh, who, who left a comment on my post uh, Monday. Uh, I had a medical procedure I had to have done. Wasn't a big deal, but uh, it kind of put me out for a couple of days. And I really do want to thank everybody who reached out both on that on that post directly or some of you even reached out on, on other platforms. Uh, just saying that they hoped I was doing well and I really do appreciate that. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me. So thank you to everybody who did that. Now that I'm feeling a little better today, I wanted to touch on uh, something that I've been using for, uh, for a while now, a couple of months anyway. Um, and it's something that I hope you guys are all using. And if you're not, I hope this video will encourage you to do it. And we're gonna take a look at a password manager. This one is self-hosted and it's called Bitwarden. So there are a lot of password managers out there like LastPass and Dashlane, and, and I'm sure there's a dozen others. Uh, but what I like about Bitwarden is that you can host this one yourself for free. Now there are a couple of paid versions that you can get uh, if you want to uh, do some extra things. In fact, let's jump over to my desktop and we'll take a quick look at that stuff just real quick. So we'll scroll down on their website. All this will be linked in the blog post in the description down below. So go ahead and check out that blog post to find this if you uh, if you don't want to just type in billwarden.com. So what we'll do uh, is we'll scroll down. Uh, they've got uh, a couple of options here. They've got personal vault for uh, for free. Uh, they, you also get uh, some additional features like two-factor authentication for 10 bucks a year. Um, I encourage two-factor authentication. I think it's a great thing to add uh, whenever you can for an extra layer of security. But again, that's 10 bucks a year. So that's gonna be kind of on you to decide if that's what you wanna do. Now they've also got an option for uh, for families. Uh, that's $1 a month. That includes five users though. So uh, so for five bucks a month, sorry, for one buck, for $1 a month, you get up to five users uh, so that you can have, uh, you can share this with friends, families, roommates, whatever the case may be. Uh, so you can all have your own uh, account set up on here. The way we're gonna do this though, we're gonna have one account, just a master account. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to get that set up. So what we'll do is we'll actually scroll up a little bit. Uh, here they've got their Docker information here for host it yourself. And they've got a, a command in here that you could run and uh, it would install everything, but we don't like to do things in shell whenever we don't have to. So what we're gonna do is take a look at uh, uh, a portainer uh, stack that I put together based on, well, actually based on what I found on their hub.docker.com page. So if we come down here and take a look, uh, that isn't right, that one is. Uh, that's originally what it looked like. Uh, I went ahead and modified it because uh, the way this is set up, um, it will not allow you to access the vault uh, on your system unless it's running over HTTPS. So for this to work, you're gonna need to follow my traffic uh, tutorial, like how to set up traffic and Cloudflare to uh, to have a secure connection to your server. Uh, I will have that linked in the blog post uh, that's also linked in the description down below, as well as I'll try to put a card uh, up, up here somewhere uh, to uh, link to that video so that you can jump over there and learn how to set up traffic on your server before you jump into this. Uh, traffic is a prerequisite to the rest of this video. So if you already watched that, you've already got traffic set up. Uh, now we can move on to this next step, which is where we're gonna take this and we're just gonna copy this uh, like that over here into Portainer. Uh, we'll go into Stacks uh, and we'll click on Add a Stack. We'll paste this in and then we'll copy this and give it a name like that. So let's kind of walk through some of these lines here just real quick uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Now the first six lines, those are pretty standard. That's just saying, hey, we're gonna be setting up Bitwarden. Uh, we're gonna pull the most recent version of Bitwarden. Uh, the container name is gonna be Bitwarden. Uh, below that, we've got some labels. Uh, this is all going, going to be traffic specific. So uh, here we're just saying enable traffic, let let traffic talk to this container. That's what this first line is for. Uh, the next line is uh, setting up the, uh, the URL that we're going to use for this. Now you could use uh, a subdomain from a domain you've already got. You could use a completely new domain. Uh, whatever you want to do here, just make sure you've got it set up in Cloudflare to point to uh, your uh, to your server, to your home IP address, in order to let all of the port forwarding happen on your modem and router. Now below that, we're saying, okay, now we're going to use, um, uh, we're going to make sure that this is on the web uh, network. Um, of course, we talked about that in the other video. And this last line, uh, I've just discovered that putting this in here makes traffic have a little bit easier time figuring out where things go. This is just saying, hey, traffic, uh, use port 80 for this. Uh, that's all you gotta do there. Uh, below that, we've got networks web. 
Uh, below that, we've got volumes. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that we have uh, a configuration volume set up on Open Media Vault. Uh, so if you come over to shared folders, you can see that I've got a config folder. Uh, this SRV dev disk by label file slash config uh, is what we've got up to this point right there. And then I appended that with Bitwarden just so it would put it in its own subfolder. And then that's all we should need to do here uh, because we've got all of our traffic stuff set up. We've already got our, our domain name pointed uh, to our server or to our home IP address. So then all we've got to do is click on deploy the stack. Okay, so we can see that this is running or it's starting anyway. Um, and if we click on the logs, it looks like it's uh, doing its thing here. What we wanna do is give this a couple of minutes to finish starting. Um, because if we go over to that URL right now that we just set up, um, there's a good chance that it's just gonna throw a 404 error here. So we'll give this a second to see what it does. All right, so that says it's healthy now. So let's give it another minute here to, uh, to load up. Oh, and you know what? It's actually not gonna work because there's one step that I missed. Uh, what we need to do is actually go in here and open up uh, our container and then click on duplicate and edit and then scroll down to network and switch this from bitwarden underscore web to web. And then we can click on deploy the container and click replace. So here you can see that it timed out. Uh, that's just because it couldn't communicate with anything. So uh, let's see here, it's still thinking. All right, so now it's under starting, so we'll give that a second. Um, so let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, so now we're getting a 404 not found. That's actually a step in the right direction. Uh, that's just saying, okay, now it's communicating, but uh, Portainer or, or Bitwarden itself is still launching here. Um, says it's still starting. Uh, and of course, in here, it's not gonna do much. Uh, so we just wanna periodically refresh this page uh, until we get this where it says running, uh, like anything else that you've got in there at this moment. Okay, so now after a couple of minutes, Bitwarden says that it's healthy. So let's come back over here and refresh. And there we go. So right now we're given the option to log in. Uh, but of course, this is gonna be your first time logging in here. So what we actually wanna do is go ahead and click on create account. So uh, we'll go ahead and say, we'll go ahead and uh, create an account. So we're gonna like that. And we'll say that. So I've given it a, a, an email address, my name, a password, and I've retyped that password. And then for this, I'm just gonna give myself a little hint and then I'll click submit. And now the account has been created. So now we can go ahead and uh, type in that master password and say log in. And I'm gonna say never, not for this site. Uh, now I've all, of course, I've already got the Bitwarden extension installed into my uh, Chrome uh, as, as a plugin or an extension there, but from here, you can click on add an item and you can fill all of this in. Um, so let's actually jump back over to here. We're gonna go back over uh, to the Bitwarden website. Uh, you can go to each of these uh, that you're going to use. And of course, you would click on add to Chrome right here. Um, <clears throat> and let's see, you can do this for any of the browsers that you wanna use there. Same thing with your uh, mobile applications or your mobile devices, whether it's Android or iOS, uh, you can install either of those onto your mobile devices to have this ready on the go as well. Now, one of the nice things about having Bitwarden, very much like most other password managers out there, is that once you've got it installed in your browser, uh, you can actually click that um, and you can say, hey, generate a password for me. Uh, and right there is the password it would generate. You can tell it to use special characters, uppercase, lowercase numbers. Uh, you know, you can adjust uh, how long you want it to be. It looks like it goes up to 128 uh, characters there. So you can make your passwords just about as long as you want. Uh, you can say a minimum of uh, special characters, numbers, uh, things like that. Um, this is saying avoid ambiguous characters, probably like things like O, uh, like capital O possibly. Uh, things that are hard to differentiate between um, like the number one, the lowercase l, uh, things like that, that that might be hard to uh, to differentiate. Yeah, it looks like you can avoid those kinds of things. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff in here. Um, 
but hopefully this gets you started on the right path to getting Bitwarden installed on your system. Okay guys, so there you go. There is setting up Bitwarden on your home server and having it accessible from basically anywhere using traffic and Cloudflare uh, to manage all of that with an SSL to keep things secure. So I hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, definitely do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, helps me out a bunch and I really do appreciate seeing the activity from you guys. Uh, just saying, hey, I appreciate that. Here's a little uh, click for you. So, uh, also, if you're interested in this kind of content, I've got some, uh, obviously, more content coming out. I've got a couple of ideas for some series that I want to start doing um, that I'm going to uh, hopefully be launching next week. Uh, so I may have to mix things up a little bit. Uh, I'm thinking having the new series be on Wednesdays. Uh, so it'll be uh, Monday and Friday at this point will be uh, these types of tutorials. And then Wednesday will hopefully be this new series. So uh, if everything goes correctly, you should start seeing that next week. Uh, so if you're interested in this type of stuff and possibly the new series where I just explain some things, uh, definitely get subscribed so you can be notified when all my new videos come out. Um, but I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to talk about regarding uh, Bitwarden and getting things set up that way. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, there are a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, below this video, you will find some merchandise. Uh, of course, with the Corona COVID thing going on right now, uh, that stuff is shipping a little slowly. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, but there is also coffee where if you wanted to do like a one-time tip, you could do that. Uh, there's also uh, Patreon where you can become a patron. Uh, there are a few different levels at which you can join. The five and ten dollar levels will give you access to a uh, patrons only Discord server where you can join that and just talk about whatever, ask for test support, whatever you want to talk about. That's what it's there for. Um, but I think that pretty much wraps everything up for this video. And again, I wanna give a big shout out to everybody who reached out uh, over the last couple of days uh, based on the post that I had on my community tab. I really do appreciate you guys for doing that. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me personally. So uh, with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.